We now know what Dartfrog is all about. Now let's install it, create our first application and see it in action. To do this, we'll visit this the Dartfrog documentation or official site and it shows you how to install. We'll need to make sure that we have the Dart SDK. If you have Flutter SDK installed, it's already included so you're good to go. If not, proceed to this link and install depending on your operating system. To know the version, um, to know the version of your Dart SDK, you just run Dart hyphen version, and you'll get to see it. You have to make sure that it is greater than or equal to three point zero point zero, and less than four point zero point zero. So Dart Frog has a command line interface that we can use to create our project. To access it, we'll need to install its Dart package, which you can find in pub.dev. It's called Dart Frog CLI. But now we're going to do it. We're going to install it from our command line, from our system, uh, from our default system terminal. So to do this, we'll first enter Dart. This is a command line tool for running Dart scripts and managing Dart packages. Then we'll enter pub which is a package manager for Dart. It helps manage dependencies and packages in Dart projects. Then we'll add the flag global. This flag specifies that you're performing a global operation. It means that the package you're working with will be installed globally on your system rather than within a specific Dart project. Then we'll enter the subcommand activate, uh, which is used to activate our package. And we'll enter the name of our package, which is dot frog CLI. So let's press enter. And with that, uh, we'll have installed dot frog itself. As you can see, dot frog will be installed, and also the dot frog CLI will be activated. Great. So once that is done, we need to uh, create our new project. To be able to create a new Dart Frog application, you just enter Dart Frog, create task list backend because we're going to create a task list app. So let's press enter. And our application has been created so let's navigate to our preferred IDE I'll be using the VS code so here's my application so let's just have a quick walkthrough of the project structure so we have the dart tool which is a directory that stores temporary files and artifacts related to the dependencies of your dart project we are not going to touch on that then we have the root uh, directory, which stores with the, the, the root directory which, where we'll actually define our endpoints. This is where most of the logic will be behind the endpoints that we're going to create. Then we have a test where one creates test cases for the application. Next, we have a dot .git ignore, the famous one, which specifies files and directories that should, not be, that should be ignored and not tracked by git. Then we have the anal analysis options yum, which is where the analyzer package is configured and its role is to perform static analysis. What that basically means is the process of analyzing your code for potential issues, errors, and inconsistencies without actually executing the code. Then we have the pubspec.lock, which locks down the versions of the packages your project depends on. And then we have the pubspec.yum, which um, provides crucial information about the project the pack uh, about including the packages it depends on the name the description and the version and lastly we have the readme.md which provides allows you to provide documentation about your project using the markdown language now that we have the new project uh, ready and we have gone through it we can go to the terminal and we're going to um start the dev server so that you can see how it works so to start the dev server we just need to read enter uh, let's navigate to application task list and then we're just going to enter the command dot 
frog dev so this will start our dev server locally by default port 8080 is used if you want to change the port you can run the command again using passing this um, argument let's do it again dot frog dev then you pass dot vm service port and then you specify the port that you want to use but in our case this is in a situation where your 8080 port is not available so in our case we're just going to pass that frog dev because our 8080 is available and then we'll run it so if we go back to our roots folder in index uh, the response that we are supposed to expect now that our dart server is running we want to push a call request and we expect to receive a response of a string that says welcome to dart frog so let's try that in our terminal so we'll enter call request get and specify localhost 880 and it will return for us the it will return for us the welcome to dart frog which is a string that we're expecting great so now we're going to another thing we need to look i need to show you is when you complete your project and you are ready to create a production build so how you do that is back to our terminal we'll just close our dev terminate our development server what you only need to do is enter the command that frog build This will create a production build and you'll find it in this build folder that has been created and inside it it will generate a docker file and this docker file is the one that now you can pick and deploy to your respective cloud platform so a quick one uh, when we created when we generated we pass run the command that uh, runs the development server it's okay it has actually disappeared so there's a folder, a directory called datfrog that's usually created. Let's try that again. So datfrog. As you can see, there's this directory that's created. This directory just stores an auto-generated file called the server.dat that contains generated code based on the code that will write ourselves inside the roots folder. So you'll tend to see it as well great so with that done now that we have our new application we have gone through how it looks we are able to run it in development wise and we know the command if we want to put it into production next we'll proceed to have have a quick crash course on that language so i'll see you on the next one